Hello everyone. Uh, this is part two of my series on creating a blog with the Helix uh, architecture. Uh, in our last session, we covered uh, how to set up uh, the basic area of the content tree, as well as we talked about the layouts and some template stuff. And we also started creating the projects uh, that we needed inside Visual Studio, uh, the feature project which is in the feature layer. Uh, we also created the multi-tenant uh, project, which sits inside the foundation layer. Um, and we just kind of covered some of this uh, site uh, unicorn serialization uh, configuration that we would need to start working with this. So in this session, we're just going to start creating the layouts some of the renderings, uh, some of the site core architecture uh, to support the blog. Uh, so to get started, I'm going to create the layout part of this. Um, so typically the best place to put layout or a, a layout definition is actually in your example project. So this will relate to the layout doesn't really relate necessarily to the, the blog feature that we're building. The layout actually would relate to this example project. So if I go to views, I go to shared, I'll create a shared views. There's different uh, structures that you can use for where you would put your layout. Um, you could also do multi-tenancy by using the areas area uh, to create, a, you know, a multi-tenant solution. That way your layout wouldn't necessarily uh, run into other layouts in the sh uh, view share folder. So um, just a suggestion, but doesn't it's not something we're going to necessarily follow in this session. Um, I'm going to do a, another uh session on areas and multi-tenancy. So um, what we're going to do is, so I created the views shared. I'm just going to create a CSHTML or a, a view. Uh, so I'm just going to create that and I'm just going to call this um, layout. So now I have the layout and then I will just define a model which I'll define as a rendering model since that is that um, and since I have um, a, a little bit of a challenge this kind of goes back to um, something that is a helpful tip uh, when working with the views web configs um, it's kind of good within helix to keep these all very basic um, because there's only one web config. Uh, there's other uh, potential options that you have, but this is really, you would really only want one views web config. And ideally, you'd want to keep it basic because if you had different ones, let's say you had uh, different namespaces to find in your project views web config, and then you had something different in your multi-tenant views web config, then it depends on which one is published last. That would be what would show up um, and then you'd find that your application doesn't work fully because um, some of the thing, some of the ones, some of the projects that need certain things wouldn't have um, that defined because the web config that's now being loaded is not the same one for the specific project that you have. So keep the web config very basic and then just use using statements inside the views themselves to specify um, the things that you need so um, or you can add like I'll be adding Sitecore presentation actually this I need to take a step back because I need to add references to the project in here so what I'm gonna do for this is since I'm using Sitecore 8.2.3 I believe let me check real quick I can't remember which one this is in uh, yeah 8.2 uh, 161 2 2 1 Anyways, what I can do is I can just make sure I install references that include that. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to do add or actually manage NuGet packages. And you'll need to make sure that you have Sitecore defined in your NuGet feeds. Um, but then you can do sitecore.kernel. And we really want the no references one. Uh, be helpful if I have that selected. Update two of Sitecore 8.2.2 is what I'm using because I want that version. So I click install. What this does is it just gives me the kernel. 
reference without including all the references of what it could include, such as kernel would probably run off MVC, things like that. Um, it wouldn't install all those, only the ones that you need to reference here. Once that's done installing, looks like it's still installing it, you will see sitecore.kernel listed in the references. I will be doing another video on how to set up the Sitecore kernel um, and use NuGet feeds from Sitecore and how you should uh, you know, add these to your project so that uh, other developers who may not have Sitecore defined can have it uh, have a reference so it knows where to pull that, that item from. All right, so now I have the kernel. Um, another thing I would like to do is actually, I need to get the MVC as well, Sitecore like MVC, no reference. And I want 161.221. And now I'm good to go. So uh, now if I go back here, I should be doing Sitecore.MVC.com presentation um, it looks like it's just a little delayed there so now it's caught up um, and so there we go um, so I'm just going to create a basic HTML page structure here create the body. So there it is. I'm going to add a placeholder. Uh, Sitecore placeholder. Um, and a naming convention, it depends on what naming convention that you want to use here. I like to call it page.grid. like that. So now I can start adding controls and adding it to, into this page.grid. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and define this in Sitecore in a second. Um, so actually, let's just go ahead and do that now. So under layouts, I'm going to have, I had created the project from the last project or last video session. Now I'm going to go ahead and just create that MVC layout. One thing I don't like about this interface is that it actually tries to create this view for you. I don't like that. I'd rather just create my layouts and my views and stuff myself. Uh, so view shared layout.cshtml. I believe that's what we gave it. View shared layout.cshtml. So, we're good to go with that. Uh, there's no models, no areas. This is where I was talking about multi-tenancy. We could define an area for this as well. So, all right. So we have this site. Uh, we need to create a home item for this. So let's do that first. Uh, let's go down to templates feature. We're just going to open up all these uh, folders. And there is the folder, for example, uh, this is where all the example uh, project templates would go. Uh, what we want to create is one for the home item. Um, this will be a page type template. I'm not going to define anything to it for now. So for now, I'm just going to call it home. And I'm going to leave it as a standard template. And we want to give this a icon just to make it representable and easy to locate in the content tree just by looking at it. We'll know it's always a home item. I believe the one I want is inside network. I'm not sure why some of these are where they're located, but uh, let's see, there it is. So home. And I always like to make sure I have standard values for any template that I create. So there we go. Um, so to 
work with this, we're just going to create a home item for this real quick. I'm not going to worry about insert options for this. Um, that goes into a more complex topic, so I'd rather not for now. I'm just going to call it home. So now we have that. Um, I want to I want to define that for the project. So that's actually not been defined yet. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create a new web config. And I'm going to call this um, sitecore.project.example.config. I must add already one there. Either way. So now I'm just going to define this patch config. Define here is the site definition for this. I should define site core first and then sites. And then I'm going to say site name uh, example patch after site name modules website. I'm going to start specifying some of the settings. Target host name. Uh, let's not specify a host name for this. We don't necessarily need one. Database is web. Virtual folder is slash physical folder slash root path. It's going to be Sitecore content. Uh, let's look at the tree real quick. So this will be the root path. Um, I'm not a big fan that when we have these paths that we have spaces in them. Although I don't, I don't think it's not sure a matter for this part of the, the tree, just because there's no URLs going to it. Um, I showed a video on SEO. Um, and some of the things that you should think about when working with SEO. This one, that one was really geared towards non-Helix implementation, but you, we can do it also for a Helix implementation. Start item, which I'll show, like I said, uh, in the future. I actually spelled, misspelled root path. Should be a capital P. We use camel casing for these. And I'm just going to say slash home. Dictionary path, we can specify, uh, let's do um, cache HTML. This might be something we want to uh, transform, potentially. If you're working in our local environment, we might not want cache HTML set to true. HTML cache size, 50 megabytes, registry size zero you state cash size zero x xsl cash size twenty five megabytes filtered items cash uh, these are all just a bunch of settings that it has. Most of these are default. Enable preview is true. Need 
variable of edit equals true, enable debugger equals true. Um, and that's pretty much it. Let's just do those for now. So now we should be able to load that site. Um, let's also, um, let's just do that for now. So we have a site definition. Now it knows that, you know, this path is for the site and the start item is home. So <coughs> now let's go ahead and, um, now that that's been done, uh, let's go ahead and start defining some of the blog things. Um, also, let's just make sure that everything is configured for um, Unicorn. So we should theoretically be able to access some of those items now. And they should exist. I wish there was a way you could see uh, what was added from here. I mean, you can see it from here. So Felix example, I'm going to see what is in the project example, visualization, and I want to just see what some templates here. So it did, it's automatically syncing it. I guess once it uh, syncs its parent, it, it can sync. I'm not as familiar with Unicorn as I am with Glass and TDS. TDS. Um, so yeah, anyways. So now, now let's uh, start creating some of the blog items. So what we're going to need for a blog is basically we're going to start with just a very basic setup. Uh, we're going to start out with just the article itself, the item, the article. We're going to have a folder that contains blog information. Basically, I'll, I'll call it a folder called blog. Um, so let's start start creating some of these things and these will go most of these will go in the feature layer um, the article we we should define as an interface template initially and then we can add that article item to a page type template of article um, so let's go ahead and like I said I'm going to create I'm gonna create a folder called folder templates and another called interface templates just to break up my types of templates so in here I am going to have a folder called blog folder now blog folder is for now, I'm not going to worry about bucketing. Uh, we'll come back to that in a later session about defining the bucket rules for this. I'm just going to start building out my very basic blog for the home page that I'm going to define. So um, by the end of this session, we should be able to see, we should have some of our rendering showing up on the home page. So on this, I'm going to create a folder template or define an icon template or icon image for the template so let's just use this and since this is a template let's define a standard values for this next I'm going to define some of these uh, interface templates so like I said I'm going to have a an article and typically the uh, best practice is to kind of designate what are interface templates now I don't I don't remember if this is a helix guideline or if this is just the way habitat runs it but uh, typically you're going to put an underscore in front of your interface templates and I think this is even if this was a habitat uh, practice you should follow this it just helps you understand which which of your uh, which of your templates are interface templates. So I'm just going to call it that. 
And now I have the ability to put in some information. So I'm going to put in information. Um, I like to specify my fields as being specific as possible. I can give them more generic names in the title field, which I'll show here in a second. So I'm actually going to call this article title, and I'm going to use all one word. Um, I'm going to also need a article um, body. And I'm not going to get into uh, taxonomy or or assigning any contributors yet. I just want to keep this very basic for now. So um, I would like this to be a rich text field, ideally. Let's add an article summary as well. And save that. And let's move that up. Save. So let's just go in. First, let's... Uh, Let's give this a standard values. Now, the only type of template I don't typically give an icon to is the interface templates. These are also considered base templates if you've worked with previous uh, architectures, not necessarily a Helix one, but a, a standard one that you've come up with yourself. You probably were calling these base templates. So we don't give icons to these, and you won't see these directly in the content. You'll see things that uh, types of pieces of content inside the content area that derive from these interface templates, but they don't directly um, re reference these templates. So um, so now that that's a set, I'm just going to go in into article title and show you what I meant. I'm just going to give this title, summary, and body. So really, the name I gave it here, the item name, is what the code's going to reference. And then the title is really a friendly um, you know, title for the, the front-end users, the, the people that actually are making changes to content. So in the blog folder, I'm going to... Actually, I, thinking about this, blog folder is not a really good name for this. What I'd actually like is to make this a page type template. So either I would have a blog folder. I, I think this is not the proper spot for this. So I'll remove that. And then I'm going to actually add that to the example project down here. So what, one thing I missed doing was I like calling this page type templates just to make it clear what type of templates we're defining in each one. And it also gives some clear separation there. So moving in that into there and then I'm going to create a blog And then I'm going to give that an icon, which I already had. Let's give it a slightly different icon, something a little bit easier to see. Because I, I noticed that the folder was very close to the same icon. So let's go into apps there. And then I will do builder standard values. Presentation or configure. I was... And then, and then what I'm going to need is I'm also going to need a page type template for article. This represents the page itself, not the interface template that inherits or is going to, this type of template is going to inherit I, that our article interface template. So... I'm going to give it an interface template or page type template should not inherit any fields uh, or should not have its own fields. Let me rephrase that. I said that wrong. Um, it should not have its own fields. It should only inherit from these interface templates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a icon. And then I'm going to set standard values. And lastly, I'm also going to make sure that inherits from that. So 
So just like that. And now, just like that, it has all those same fields. So if I go here, you'll see that I have title. That reminds me while looking at it that I'd also want to set the standard values to dollar star name. I think I did a video on this a long time ago on what that is. Um, but so now when we go to add a new article, it will have, it'll put in the name that you put in the item name and put it as the t title. Um, let's make sure the insert options is set to um, actually to insert a blog or an article for a blog. And then let's just, I think I already did this, but just to make sure, confirm that the blog is already added here. So it is, so we're good to go. So basically now what we can do is we've go up to all sites, main sites, example, home, we can actually define a blog. And I'm just going to call it blog in this situation. And then lastly, we can actually create an article. This is a test article. Um, and this gives it a friendly name. And then I just call it this. And we need to implement the logic that I showed in my SEO training uh, video into this, this solution. I will do that here um, on one of the, between one of my sessions, I'm going to just go ahead and implement that. Just so that's in here. I'll uh, provide a link down in the description on, you know, where you can watch that video. So now we're good to go. We basically are pulling in an article. Um, let's start defining some of the layouts, the renderings that we're going to have for this. So for the feature of the blog, we're going to have some controller renderings. The first one we're going to have is something called um, a, a list. Uh, I'll just call it article list. We could be more generic with this name, um, especially if we had a listing component that was could potentially show different types of content. Um, but I'm just going to call it article list. And I am going to give it a fully qualified name, which I don't have currently. And I will create a view rendering, actually a controller rendering. I like doing controller renderings for everything. Article display. So those are it. Uh, let's now go back into Visual Studio and let's start defining um, some of those uh, things that we're defining. So uh, inside controllers, I want to create a new class. And I'm just going to call this article controller. Um, one other thing I need to do is I need to bring in references to Sitecore. Uh, all I really need right now is just a Sitecore.com. Um, so no references and I want this version. So install. I'm going to create, I'm going to read, well, I'm going to keep that name, but I'm going to create another one called View Models. This really depends on your naming conventions. So models I typically see as data models, and view models are, like the name suggests, view models. So this just helps uh, kind of break up and helps you segment your, your uh, different layers within one project. We could also have a repository, a services, framework, everything like that could be inside just this one project. So we're not going to go too much into that as well. Um, we need to start creating some more foundation projects before we can really start to create some IOC containers and 
um, you know, injecting our dependencies uh, for, you know, for example, if we had an article controller, we might have a dependency on the repository or services layer. Um, and this is where you could start injecting your dependencies into, um, into your controller instead of uh, putting concrete implementations, which is what I would do right now. So um, let's just go ahead and create the folder for article. And I'm just going to create, before I go all that way, it's just fun, uh, empty constructor. And then I'll just create a public action result. And I have article list. Right now, NBC is not defined here. So I'll just have to do that. And return a view, which will Um, I need to define a controller. And lastly, public action result, article display. So that's that. And now I'll do article and then I'll call this actually what I like to do is make these where we know it's an article because the controller says it's article so there's no point in prefixing these with article just remove those so and then in our article the views would be let's just go ahead and create these a list.cshtml and we would have um, a uh, display.cshtml. Because we're having views, we probably should add the reference for MVC, Sitecore MVC. Uh, manage NuGet packages, MVC. So now I'll have a using sitecore.mbc and using sitecore.mbc.presentation and then I'll have a model. And for now, I'm just going to have render. And the same for here. Um, using sitecore.nbc and that's that so now we've got everything we need for that uh, we have the basic setup um, of the views. So let's just define these inside here. So um, these will be, if we go to Oracle Controller, we can do, let's scroll down a little bit. So it's just going to be site core dot feature dot blog dot controllers. Feature blog, and then it's going to be this is the which one is this article display, and so it will just be called display. And then this one will be similar to the first site core that feature blog controllers article controller, and then this will be site core that feature blog and then this will be the uh, list so now we've defined those um, so now we could start defining some of the home page uh, settings so 
I really need to define a few more things, but um, what we could do is just define the base or define a listing component to show up on the home page. So all I need to do is go to standard values for a home item, go to edit, go find that layout that we created, which is part of the project. And then we can start, we can just add one of the renderings that we just created. I'll create article list and this will add to the page.grid, which is part of that main layout. I'm going to save that, save. Um, lastly, I'm going to go back here and I'm just going to define in the list an H1. So I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to just go ahead and publish some of these changes. So they're out there. So go back here and I'm just going to publish change all right and I'll just select publish okay now if I go over to helix example flash local and we'll see that we're actually seeing the changes that we made so um, on this we're basically pulling in the page in the body of the main layout, as we defined, we had a placeholder called page.grid. Um, and then that's pulling in this uh, rendering that we created. The This is the blog listing rendering. And it's pulling in the item. And uh, right now, there's nothing more than H1 inside that rendering, uh, which is this is the list. So that pretty much concludes this session. In the next session, I'm going to cover setting up glass and getting uh, set up with um, pulling data from Sitecore. Um, I'm probably going to cover a few other kind of more advanced topics of setting up this blog because we haven't really covered that yet. I'm also going to try to pull in some HTML um, that uh, we've created internally uh, to just uh, use that as a kind of a stepping off point to show kind of the front end process that would be involved with this a little bit. Um, I'm not a front end developer, so that's just going to be a kind of an introduction, but not a full on, uh, full fledged uh, introduction. I'm going to try to see if I can get a, a front end dev to assist with that at some point. So, all right. Um, let me know if you have any questions on this. Um, I'm going to continue on with the series uh, within the next few weeks. Uh, more sessions will be coming out. And uh, hopefully you could, guys can follow along. Um, also, I'm going to include a link to the GitHub um, where I will be putting up these videos uh, and the source to these videos um, as well. All right. Thank you.